then different sources and different uh, capacities. To so try and uh, equip them within the, the UN that every country, yeah, that either in terms of the category of their resources, of their sizes, or their capacities, then I don't think the UN will be functional because it is they are, everybody in, in the General Assembly are truly equal. The only difference is in the Security Council. But something good there. Good. Then we look at UN and look at what the Chinese are doing. What they are because they, are, they used to be one superpower, but now they are very much superpower. And I see, as a as a country, we are going to to sell our goods. What's first important? Because it's what you get from what you sell. I don't know. Have this one been explained? Why should we have a big office in, in Geneva and have a small office in China or in India? Or the two, where do we get more? That's it. something which uh, we are not understanding. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, we're talking about two different things yes. here. The, the political dynamics of the of the of the of the, of, uh, of international dynamics, political and security wise, you should not underestimate the impact of the office of the uh, of the U UN in Geneva. It is so critical that it overwhelms that office of U.S. in, in China that you want to sell coffee, you want to trade and whatever. Over and above trade is you have to ensure the, survi the viability of your government. Sure. Then you talk about trade. Yes. Yes. Let me explain to him, because without being a viable government, you cannot do anything else. Now, in Geneva we talk about the Human Rights Council, which you have to be um, um, which you have to be on top of, whether you want or not. The WTO is in Geneva. WHO, ILO, <laughs> Nation of Refugees. So, I would love a debate on this. <laughs> we have to present this parliament. I actually have two, two issues here I wanted to bring to the attention of the Looking at your brief here, I've seen a number of challenges that you presented before the committee, which among um, most of them are actually linked to limited resources or limited budget of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And when you look at what what you, Where are you? the brief, page fourteen, page fourteen, last page. Yes. Other challenges. Challenges. By the minister. Limited implementation of commercial and economic diplomacy, and I want to believe it is because of the limited budget. That's that is why we have not been able to implement to 100% as we wish. Then lack of budget to open missions in strategic places, for example, South Korea and the rest of it all. And all this is linked to the budget. And then when you get back to the first page of the brief, I, my, my, my concern is if in the last financial year we had the 52 plus billion, Oh. What explains the reduction to 30 billion? I don't know. Has the budget of Kisa come back? No, the. And yet we are presenting these challenges still of lack of budgets or limited budgets, and the budget instead has even declined further. I expected an increase because we are, we are talk, the last time we had meetings, we had actually proposed strategic areas that the ministry would think of opening, like you've actually identified uh, uh, missions. But instead of having that being implemented, we are still lamenting about it. And what explains? And, and uh, actually, adding to what my vice chair is saying, the money that had been allocated, that had been reduced, it had been aligned to activities. Yes. How are you feeling that virtue? Because those activities would not be carried out. And uh, they, they are still standing to be done. So what do you do about Maybe we need an explanation why they're uh, in, in the budget another one, Another one is affecting on 
ongoing projects. Mm. An economic diplomacy. Mm. Now, if it is an ongoing project and we are carrying out a renovation of a mission somewhere, does it stop on the way? When already some resources have already been transmitted for the work. So these are the issues which we really wanted to, you know, to know. Then we know if we are doing this in this country, we committed this amount of money. If we stop now abruptly, what does that one translate into stagnation of that project? And that would be a The problem is money. Yes. Was that I thought here we would say where it is the point of parts. Otherwise, we would carry out everything as it was. It's not possible. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman, with due respect, you, um, your, your observation is right. And Mr. Chairman's observation here is right. Um, and I wish. Our budget would, would uh, be maintained at 52 or 53 billion. It, it was practical. However, this was a short lived uh, budget, 53 billion. We were given an additional uh, money of 20 billion so that we host the, the, uh, the South, South, uh, and, and China summit, the G77. I remember because of the uh, COVID pandemic, this was postponed. So our our budget had been ballooned by an additional 20 billion in order to enable us to be able to host uh, that summit. But because that summit was postponed because of COVID, hence it was reduced now because taken back because the summit has been postponed until further notice. Hence the reduction to 30.44 billion. There's an additional two billion, which was uh, taken off again, unfortunately by, by finance. Yet this was meant for, to, uh, towards what has become a continuous problem, contribution to international organizations. This is the explanation for the reduction in our budget. It was it has been ballooned temporarily, just temporarily, to enable us to be host the G77 uh, uh, what summit. So South Corporation. And but unfortunately again on top of taking back that money, they are again took another, another two billion which we thought should have remained because our international ob obligations, contribution continues accumulating on a yearly basis. Honorable yeah, yeah. these are the concerns we have as a committee of parliament. Because once we identify activities and we really consider them as important for funding. And the funds are not forthcoming. That translates into non performance. Mr. Chairman, I totally agree with you. Mr. Chairman, and, and one of the things I've always told you is that it is, I do not know how we can hold the uh, means of finance to task. That when once it, it is an agreed uh, a budget based on uh, activities and based on planned uh, obje objectives. Then every, every year it becomes a habit of them to rescind on, on agreed activities and agreed plans uh, thereafter. This has now become an annual thing which, which they do. Hence, every year we, we always come back to you and tell them we have these challenges. Uh, which are enormous, and there are the, the really many, many challenges. Juba offices, uh, our, our chancery and mission in, in Juba is in, 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 in complete. We have, uh, you know, other um, opening missions in, in uh, Angola, opening in Cuba, every opening in South Korea, we cannot do it because when we present to them, they give us the impression but don't worry, this will be financed. And we'll be really sure of it. But when the shell comes to push, the money will put in place. And this is the unusual every year we come back to this position. So I, I, I have always asked you that I, 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 you as the chairman and the committee 
should take on the means of finance, really. To take the means of foreign affairs seriously. But when it comes also to when there's a, a, a cross cutting of budget by government, we're not the first victims. <laughs> these people travel too much, these people travel too much. But well, what is the foreign affairs apart from how our job is to travel? And if you don't travel, your flag is lying on the table, <coughs> empty, practically empty. At the international meeting, those who organize the meeting will put your flag there. If you don't come, your flag will be the empty. When they talk away against your country, when they talk something, you cannot respond. When they're distributing resources, for example, the OIC, when, they, when there's an opportunity for you to, to converse with something, especially the OIC, when the opportunity for campus, for college, for institutions, and this, if you're not there, <laughs> others get it. And, this, and our neighbors are very good at it. You see the amount of money the OIC puts in, 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 in Rwanda, you know, in Tanzania here. It's amazing. And yet, 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 let me just finish. Yet, when it comes for us to support these countries for their candidatures, for their whatever it is, we all the same supporting them. We support them for whatever they want. But when it comes to us now to get something from them, we cannot get from them because we don't participate. Maybe, Mr. Chairman, I don't know how, what strategies we can use. As far as resource mobilization is concerned for the Minister of Foreign Affairs, what the Minister is talking about is exactly what they talk about Foreign Affairs Committee. Because they give us the same budget as to the other committees. Are we together? And then they question, but what is your productivity? We all know that our major role is to check on missions and see how they are performing and also their challenges. But you cannot give us the same budget as the budget of uh, agriculture here in the uh, uh, budget of uh, those committees that are just uh, local here. So I think our government really underestimates the role of foreign affairs at the ministry and also here at parliament. And that's why you talked about the meeting with His Excellency the President. Because we know that countries, how much they inject in foreign affairs policy is what they get. Yes. You see, when we talk about Rwanda, and then everywhere you see Rwanda sponsoring, given these premier matches, we put people putting on Rwanda jersey, you take it for granted. But they are advertising their what? Their country. I think, Mr. Chairman. But when you tell finance about Rwanda, they say, you don't hear that. You see? Why do you go to Rwanda? People come to Rwanda for tourism. Yet, after getting to Rwanda, they come to, come to Uganda. How <laughs> together? But the main entrance is Rwanda. Because of their advertisement, the way how they advertise, they're advertising our, uh, our gorillas. And yet, so I think, Mr. Chairman, we need to see or even to have a meeting with Minister of Finance, a very critical meeting, so that we can really uh, interest them, so that they can know the role of foreign affairs. Let us look at other countries. How are they manning this ministry? Because it is very important. It is the, the eye, it's the face of any country. Without fund, good foreign policies, we are nothing. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. For the last 10 years, 10 years, in the meeting of health, we have failed even to have a small Christmas uh, party for staff. Even for staff. Ideally, when we have a Christmas party, we invite foreign diplomats. Yes. But they invite us. <laughs> at the end of the year, they also have inviting minister here. It's, it's sometimes I feel that I should not go because I cannot invite them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we talk about independence yes. and missions. Yeah. Yes. And we even had to put it in a budget of 10, it was it, what, 10,000 years dollars? Yeah. To celebrate uh, our independence. Yeah, yeah. when well, we well, yeah, celebrate really independence, you invite other foreign diplomats in the yes. mission. Yes. Is there, is there when you engage and talk to people? Even the things which you, you don't expect to talk, you can resolve them in that small party. I am engaged, I am so 
every week invitations to have lunch with this German ambassador, the EU ambassador. You know, it is embarrassing. It is just embarrassing. Okay? That I, when now I, I, in my turn, comes. I cannot. And, and I now these days just so I find excuses. I find excuses, oh, I've got up countries. Because. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't do that, no, every time you are going to pass home, you are going to pass home. Why is this guy inviting me? <laughs> you know? Why is this guy inviting me? It becomes a problem. You know? It is human. We have been asking Yes, yet, Mr. There is, there is something called there is no free lunch. There is nothing for free lunch. <laughs> When an ambassador invites you for lunch, okay, there is a mission for that lunch. He's not giving you free lunch. I also want to invite them for lunch with a mission, for a purpose. Where? Okay? I, every year I'm disturbing this man. This year I want to make sure I want all the African ambassadors to be able to invite them and I splash on them. Where did we get? But that's what I wanted to say. So, you know, so, the African ambassadors, when so, they have an issue, they stand with you. They, 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 even when we when they invite them all the whole, Minister Putin had a briefing recently of these ambassadors. If we consolidate with the African ambassadors, with them, when these Europeans are talking rubbish, they stand, we don't have to talk. We just talk on our behalf. We don't even have to open our mouth. They want they always stand up and defend our position. Now if you don't even <laughs> are your own brothers and sisters, you don't even invite them. Huh? Well how do you expect him to stand up and, and talk or, or talk for you? It is it's it's a, it's, it's a challenge. You invite visitors here. Mm. Mm. Special right. envoys come, uh, special visitors come here. You know, the day a visitor special envoy comes, first day, the world over, we when I go the, uh, the, that evening I'm invited for the dinner. Stand up. Standard. When I have a special guest come to Uganda, that day I should host him for what? A special dinner. I invite the chair of the political committee, I invite this, this, oh, I will, well, well, a special envoy will come here. Ooh, uh, but I went to the airport, came to Buzay, I disappear. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, if, 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 you know, if, if some of us, if some of us had not grown in Western Europe, and, and, and had some of the skills, you know, it would be the worst situation. But, but I'm telling you, it would be the worst situation. Drop, right? okay. Can, can we open. find solutions okay. to this? Because we shall continue lamenting. Well, you know, we have solutions. I want you to take on to finance. That, that is what we are saying. Take head on and say, and, and finance, we are going to collaborate our colleagues. If you don't adjust, we will not. The yes, they said, they said, the finance budget will not be looked into. Because we need going by what Honorable Latifa mentioned. Even the committee. The committee can do so much abroad for us, so much abroad for us. Meet your colleagues in the Senate, meet your colleagues in, in, in the House of Representatives. If you meet them frequently, twice a year, and tell, tell them the, the, the what's happening in Uganda, you have done us a lot of homework. And surprisingly, if, if you go to AU for me, okay, two or three times in a year, how much homework have you done for me? So much for me. You go there to work, you don't go there to visit, you go there to work. They should finance you to go meet those those ones. In you, huh? when, was the, when was the last time you went to the European Union uh, Council or Commission? This committee, this committee of foreign affairs. When did they go to Brussels last time? If any. Or even if you, do you know where the, the council is? Do you know where the commission? Uh, and this the committee of, of Parliament and foreign affairs. Really? But I have to struggle. I have to struggle with this bazungu on my own. Yet you guys are here to help me soften the ground. And if you facilitated and you and you, 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 you went ahead of me, by the time I come back, you know they said, oh Mr. Minister, what you are telling us, we had we had your committee, we met the chairman, the members, they all come from different backgrounds, they're not only uh, the, the ruling government, but they come from opposition and, and both sides better to tell. And that's what the Bazooka want to hear from the ruling party and from the opposition. The committee. So even when I, I come as government not to make my position, it's okay. So we should stop lamenting. Mr. Chairman, yeah. step your, your put your, your foot on the accelerator with the committee and 
do this head on. Me, I'm tired of all these finances. Really. I go, you go to bang. The bang I do there. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> As if it's my father's business. But that's what you But someone I want you to know. From from your own observation, to all countries, we have working with your purpose. We have a very good example of where we're going. All is able to be special. Because what we are saying, we have seen it everywhere. I've been to the embassy. You go and visit an embassy, you find out it looks like it. And now they receive you. But then you get an embassy. The students who are recently in China for drugs, who is the mature people? The people who are arrested everywhere, who are supposed to be on their throne, is you who will be free them. But nobody knows about it. Nobody knows about it. Uh, the, the relation between uh, a government and government, uh, uh, medicine, the relation between um, this kind of hospital and the Kororo. All the things which you are moving, we have seen this, but does it, how does it impact on the man? How does the man in the position understand that what they are doing is for us? That's what we should first question. Yes, but, but let me tell you the situation now, people. We are exporting so many of our girls abroad. Me, first of all, I, I was against this thing. I'm still against it. Until there's a proper structure on the ground. Proper structure, really. So let our girls don't suffer. Who suffered the most amongst which are not told in this story? My fellow service officers. A girl comes when she's pregnant. She enters the embassy. How to get pregnant? She will not tell you. Why? Because it's a crime in the Saudi, in the, those British countries to work to have a legitimate uh, pregnancy. Now, we don't have money to cater to the situation. Uh -huh. That's what I'm so, the ambassador says to reach everybody. Now, Munange, uh, you, uh, you bring a ten dollars. You bring a ten dollars. All the staff have to take out ten dollars of their pocket to give this girl to what? Yes. It's so bad. Yes. Staff are taking money from their pockets. And we are witness to that. Yes. But yes, they must say. Yes. Yeah, they, they have to share our salary. Is that it? Okay. Now in in in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, we have changed the, the, the downstairs for what for the girls when when, when they run. <laughs> then you ask, okay, who will buy the toothpaste this week? There's some one person will be responsible for buying all the tooth, toothbrush and toothpaste, and girls have so many other things they want. The girls don't just buy toothbrush and toothpaste. There was other family things which you cannot get involved with. So you just have to find the money to give her because she will not accept you. If you go and buy pants and bring uh, funny things to her, she might not want to feel comfortable taking it. So you find ourselves to give the money to the girl. See, now you go to the shop and buy your thing. Where does the money come from? Not for the peers. It's not paying for. I've seen this. So uh, we are all aware of these things. So my prayer, my prayer is the arrogance in finance have to be dealt with by you people. Please, the fin uh, this arrogancy, finance has to be taken by you, head on. Because for, for finance, there is nothing. Finance, they never have a shortage of money. This poor man here, I see driving uh, that the, 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 the what, a Prado, the lowest level of Prado. The, but in in the, in, uh, in finance, the, the PS, the, the big, you know, VX, which he puts hands, he puts hands there. Commissioner, <laughs> 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 he's driving a what? A billion cruiser. <laughs> the standing order does not allow it. Huh? When you meet it, when you meet it in the air, in the, in the, in the plane, this one goes in the back there. Yes. Huh? But you see, the commissioner from finance sitting next to you. He said, well, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm a commercial traveler. <laughs> I'm not going to say, why is he next to me? I'm a commercial traveler. <laughs> But no, but 
I think now let us let, let us realign ourselves to yeah, yeah, I think we don't the budget. But, we don't need but, to the point there. But, but, but my, my final uh, talk on this is with the chairman and, and, and colleagues. You help us. You are very familiar with what Minister Foreign Affairs stands for. You know what it takes. We have always said that Minister of Foreign Affairs should be taken away from administration huh? to production. And this has been resisted for years. From the moment I came, because we can quantify how much we produce for this country in terms of everything. So I said, why are we in administration all this time? Consume, consume. They said we are consumptive, consumptive, yeah, consumptive. Ministry. ministry. Not productive. Not productive. So why do they tell us to be productive? That's the most important thing. That will be, be a beginning. That will be a very good beginning if we are what we are lying with. Then thereafter, you are very aware of the kind of funding. That we don't ask for much. We don't ask for much. We are asking. And what is your, your, your asking? And you're within. asking within. We, we, we have something which is competitive to what our neighbors do here. With the little budget we, are, we have, we are sharing our neighbors. But you imagine if you if you just give us something comparative to what our neighbors have, how much would be able to do? But sir, what do you understand? I said that's why I said we should the chairman should make sure that we make the president give the substantial incentive from here. But what you ask for, so now we're mining. What I'm saying, we not have meeting. First point out, whatever these problems you have said, this is what's supposed to be done. What's your view, sir? You see, if, before you go, when you're going to do it, it's good for you. But let my peers write to you here, and they give you the kind of inward investments that we have as foreign affairs been able to do. In quantified in terms of money. In terms of tourism, how much you're managed to do it for this country. Okay? In terms of uh, commercial diplomacy, how much you have done. Okay, scholarships and all this, you you choose you, you let us convert, which then disappears into the system, and nobody wants to lump sum it for as, as our credit. So that you can tell me when I talk to the president, when the president likes his figures, yeah, that's you show the figures. Say this: how much we are going to waste, and how much we are supposed to do. Simple. Can you quantify that? Let us, let us let us now because because of time we need to complete this work and it is going to another state from here. It is going to another state today from here of whatever we have recommended. Thank you, Chair. But, but it's still, like I said earlier on, let us not lose out the point which has come out of this discussion. Um, the committee meeting, the Minister of uh, Finance, I think it's quite key and very, very important that we have time and meet them. 
because maybe all all these challenges are actually emanating because uh, the, 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 there is no positive outlook about the ministry and what the ministry undertakes by the Ministry of, uh, of Finance. So once that is handled, maybe then we shall be able to, to be having a big budget for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I, I, I still want, had one more question on, on the challenges and, and linking it, that is the challenge of continuous accumulation of areas on contributions to international organizations and bodies due to inadequate budget. When you look at that, that, that challenge and then you go to page nine where you're talking of supporting 10 Ugandans for appointments uh, positions at that level. How will that be possible if we have areas and if we are not making our contribution as a country? I looked at uh, your, the pull out, what, what you presented as a ministry for the, for, for the NRM day and I saw that I think we supported three people. And I'm like, only three? With all the billions that we've been making as contributions to these international fora, international bodies, <coughs> we have only supported is it the 17 days and the rest. There were only so three people. Right. Now we are planning for 10, and and we have areas. We are not making, a, 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 we are not making contributions, or we are not paying to these international organizations. How possible will that be that we shall be able even to realize the 10 that we plan? I even see that as a very small number. For a whole country to just have 10 people at that international level. Uh, yet other countries have, have bigger numbers than we do. Of course, I know it is compounding to the challenge the ministry has ex explained here, but I think we can still be able to do better. Or oh, we could use that as a justification to negotiate for increased budget for the ministry. So that we will not really have our, our, our budget remain constant. As far as I'm even concerned, because when I even looked at it, it's like the figure is really constant. Don't we have salary increment, annual salary increment to the staff? Because if you're having the wages from last year up to this year, it is all the same amount. So don't we have salary increments in our, in our ministries or agencies? In fact, to supplement her, it may not necessarily be increments alone, but appointments that come to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are not generated from the ministry. Mm -hmm. They are generated from the appointing authority. Yeah, and the appointing authority would appoint someone at any time, sometimes when the budget has already been done. So what do you do about that? How do you cater for someone? Because if it is salary, the salaries are being faced. For staff both here at headquarters and abroad, how do you cater for a newly appointed ambassador? has an appointment later means this person should start earning. So how do you, you know, make interventions in such issues? Then people will say we are on category. We are giving my appointment, I'm here for one year. I cannot go to report to the station. So these are things that we should, uh, you know, avoid. Because they are, they are embarrassing. Fine. If, uh, uh, Finance Minister, I think we are strong enough to inform the President. I'm not going to be the one who will the meeting. Why do they wait for people to fail? And is it a day they made any ministry ambassadors? Is this a placement? What? And is that man to get to get an ambassador? I know. I don't know that. You know, you know, you know, you know, the president says, the president said, the president always says, my father's house has got what? Many rooms. So I think on those basis. I think the ministry has been very good in answering our challenges. But always our challenge has been. Because those who fail are to those who die. Well, in the Bible, when they say my father's house got so many things, it's what come those who die, the spirit of those who die is going to die. Yes. When you look at uh, other challenges, number one, uh, the inadequate institutional capacity to provide financial services for this festival and that road. I can understand it's Middle East, but Kenya. Ugandans, uh, distressed Ugandans in Kenya, 
Ini kena Where we will have a bus Or how will that be Come back to Papa Where we have even our Bombardiers Where we can send buses What are these buses You can have in Kenya How did they destroy the distance Why are they distressed in Kenya And we cannot come back here No, what I'm saying Hey, we can understand those who are distressed in the Middle East and the Far East. But when it comes to neighboring countries, which is just a stone for distance away from us, and we can use all the available means of bringing them back, and then they still, we, see, we still talk about this distressed in Kenya. Secondly, Mr. Chan, uh, when you look at number three, small rate of acquisition of development and maintenance of property example. I think I've talked about um, this for so many years. And we even talked about the, the use of NTR. Is it NTR? Yes. Outgale. But some of these missions collect money. Unfortunately, they want the money to the center, mm -hmm. even if they have serious work to be done at the embassy. Mm -hmm. And when the money is sent back to Kampala, it, it takes the ages mm -hmm. to do what they're supposed to do. To work on. Is there any way how we put it? Because I know that there are some missions that have been allowed to use the NTR to work on some basis. How can we how can it be a policy? Because we know that this sometime back they used to to use this NTR that was over abused. So they said no, let the money first come back to the center and we reallocate. But you have seen missions in solid states. And yet they tell us they are contributing a lot, they are getting a lot of money, and they send it back to Kampala. So even that one is a great area that we must we have a fine uh, a solution. Finally, Mr. Chairman, we look at inadequate foreign service allowance mm -hmm. and educational allowance of children of foreign service officers. Every in every year in and out, we are talking about foreign services. Uh, the, 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 the dedication <coughs> of, uh, of children of foreign service officers and how uh, they are not facilitated. We know countries whereby if you have a family, if you have children, they must go to international schools. And the budget can, cannot allow. At times they even try to leave their family behind so that they can maybe go to these ordinary schools Yet you are separating the family mm -hmm. okay. So, in every budget of foreign affairs, for the time I've been on this committee, we have been lamenting about this. How best can we improve on the allowances for foreign service officers that can really enable them to cater for the educational services of their children? And finally, Mr. Chairman. When you look up, we look at number seven, insufficient wage affecting promotions and recruitment of foreign service officers. This one is, was also uh, almost similar to what I was talking about. We cannot really motivate foreign service officers. Maybe at the ministry or at any, sta any station, when the promotions are not generated within. Like someone has been an someone has been in the mission for some good time, but when it comes to appointment, he's left out. So there's no that kind of motivation that, yes, let me work hard so that I can be promoted. Because these promotions at times, they come from His Excellency the President. And then these people, since they are not promoted, they are rarely they not because really those positions are going to be taken by politicians. So it's only when we meet, uh, when we meet yeah. the president, really to interest to him that yes, we cannot stop you from promoting uh, political officers. But let's look at even within the ministry, how can these people be really motivated in as far as promotion is what is concerned? But, sir, on, on top of that, I want to add one thing. When you talk about looking after the children of the, our ambassadors and people, 
we, our people who can abuse it. I remember uh, a tentacle when he was made ambassador in America. The president of America told him, but sir, Mr. Ambassador, we know that in Africa, I mean, you know, America asked him, but how can you bring all this delegation? The delegation of one ambassador going is a whole village. <laughs> It takes every cousin, brothers and minerals, and they're all on one pay. In the army, when you are paid, you are sad. It's your sad. When you get the money, just be. When you get the money, just be. When you get the money, just be. When you get the money, just be.